Ukraine, where the war is now in its third year. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky remaining defiant and telling the world that there is no option but to win the fight against Russia. And in a rare admission, Zelensky said 31,000 Ukrainian soldiers have died since the war began. CNN cannot independently verify that figure, but U.S. officials estimate that the death toll could be much higher, closer to 70,000 soldiers. On the front lines, Ukraine's weapons and ammunition are running desperately low. And right now, there doesn't appear to be much hope that more U.S. aid is coming quickly. At a press conference earlier in Kyiv, CNN's Caitlin Collins asked Zelensky about that. It has been two years now, obviously, since this war started. But for the first time since Russia invaded, U.S. aid to Ukraine is seriously in doubt. That a total standstill in Congress. Do you still have faith in the U.S. Congress? Congress, yeah. Well, I do have hopes for, 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 for the Congress. I'm sure there will be a positive decision because otherwise it will leave me wondering what kind of world we are living in. Because of that, we do count on Congress support. We do know we need the support within a month. I met the uh, leader of both parties in different formats, and the president, uh, those at power, those in oppositions know it. Uh, they know that our request has been to get this assistance in a month. They know that. As regards aerial defenses, we do know they do know we need more. Uh, if we speak about that today, but, well, anyway, most of the money will be left uh, in the U.S. with companies producing the types of weapons we need. So let us not forget about that. This is not about toys regarding uh, the Congress, the war in Ukraine. Uh, there are certain steps like security guarantees with uh, some very specific concrete things. And there is a very serious, specific, concrete things about money. And we do see the challenges in the U.S., but we do count on the U.S. remaining at the lead of the democracy worldwide. All right, we've got full coverage of today's developments. Let's get started with Caitlin Collins. Uh, Caitlin, after that press conference, you had a one-on-one -on -one with President Zelensky. Uh, what did he say? Yeah, we went further into that conversation about USAID because there are so many conversations here at this moment that they had, of course, marking two years since Russia invaded Ukraine, obviously a lot of different dynamics at play when it comes to the mobilization of the draft here, what their next tactic is on the battlefield. Zelensky replacing his top general with someone new, a new commander in chief. But really everything has centered on this conversation about USAID and what is going to happen because Zelensky obviously has been to Washington many times. He has made these appeals to the U.S. Congress. But what we know is the reality on the ground in Washington is that right now it's at a total standstill. And that $60 billion that was in the package that was passed by the U.S. Senate has gone nowhere in the House, and the House is on a two-week recess still as of this moment. And so it hasn't shifted at all. Speaker Mike Johnson hasn't made clear what he's going to do with it. And so we talked about some of the claims that were made by lawmakers here, including one by a U.S. lawmaker who I should note voted against this aid package. And this is what Zelensky said in response. Senator J.D. Vance, who was in Munich at the security conference but didn't meet with you, he said that even if you got the $60 billion in aid, it is not going to fundamentally change the reality on the battlefield. What's your response to that? I'm not sure that he understands what's going on here. And uh, we don't need any rhetoric of, from people who, who are not uh, deeply in the, in the, you know, in the, in the war. So to understand it is to come to the front line to see what's going on, to speak with the people, then to go to civilians to understand what will be with them and then what will be with them without this support and he will understand that millions of people have been killed, will be killed. As it, so he doesn't understand it? 
because he doesn't understand it. Of course, he God, God bless you don't have the war on your territory. So that is his response to a senator who is against sending any more aid to Ukraine, Senator J.D. Vance, obviously. But one thing that Zelensky has also been contending with is he's been meeting with lawmakers who do support sending more aid to Ukraine. Senator Chuck Schumer, the top Democrat in the Senate, was just here in recent days, Fred. So have been Republicans in the House, like Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick of Pennsylvania, who has introduced his own bill to try to get aid to Ukraine passed. And so Zelensky says he's relying on those kinds of conversations when he says he does have hope for the U.S. Congress, that there will be more U.S. aid. But what he is also making very clear are the implications and what is going to happen on the battlefield if they don't get any more U.S. aid, Fred. Right. He's making it very clear. While he doesn't wish this on anyone, he also seems to understand that unless you're in his shoes, do you really, or any of the Ukrainians' shoes, do you, can you sometimes really understand what they're going through? Uh, well, um, he is making his pleas loud and clear in so many uh, ways. Uh, thanks so much, Caitlin. Let's talk more uh, about uh, the situation again in Ukraine, where we heard in an interview with our Caitlin and Collins uh, that President Zelensky is saying it's imperative to try to get more U.S. aid. Steve Hall is a CNN national security analyst and a former CIA chief of Russia operations. Steve, great to see you. So let's begin with Zelensky's comments, not only making the plea uh, to the Western community, including the U.S., for more uh, aid, but he's also saying that the losses have been great. Some 30,000 soldiers have been lost but U.S. officials are claiming that number is much higher, maybe even double, somewhere around 70,000. Either way, it's a significant uh, loss to that country. But they seem to maintain an, a hopefulness that they actually can win against Russia. What do you think? You know, all of us have been talking about this, Fred, for the past couple of years. And, you know, every Russia watcher that I know has been wildly off about something. So it's really, really hard to predict. You remember at the beginning of this, we were all like, oh, geez, you know, Moscow is going to overrun Kiev here in a number of days. And then that didn't happen. It's very embarrassing for the Russians. So, you know, this is going to be a long war. It's going to go back and forth, back and forth. But one thing that Zelensky is absolutely right about is if they do not receive the aid, the assistance, from the West and more specifically from the United States, it is going to be either very, very difficult or almost mm -hmm. impossible for them to actually protect territorially all of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what has Zelensky worried, not to mention at least some Western and US politicians. Yeah, Putin is watching this. And of course he's finding, he's gonna look for uh, moments in which to gain some momentum or take advantage of this kind of public discussion about the deficit uh, that Ukraine is feeling. So how is uh, Russia pivoting, you know, changing its strategy um, on a dime, on a constant, as the world talks about what aid is or isn't going the way of Ukraine? Well, first of all, this has been a very good couple of weeks uh, for Vladimir Putin. I think we can see that just in his demeanor and, and, and what he's done and said. Mm -hmm. I think Vladimir Putin is now beginning to uh, beginning to be able to tell all of those doubters. And by, by doubters, I don't mean people in the streets who might be protesting. I mean, those around him, uh, you know, his innermost circle who might have said, geez, is this really going to work? Mm -hmm. Initially, he was essentially saying, look, over the long run, if we hold in there, the West and the United States specifically will lose focus. They'll lose their nerve. They will stop supporting supporting Ukraine one way or another. Mm -hmm. Just have patience. Well, now two years later, he can say, look, the patience is beginning to pay off. It's up to the West again to show him uh, that he's wrong. But I think he's feeling very good about things and will continue uh, along along the same path that really he's been continuing since the very beginning. And Putin has reason to believe he should feel good uh, leading up to elections, which are just coming up in a few weeks. I mean, obviously, he has no challengers, but what is his disposition here? Again, I think very positive. Uh, you know, elections are, are election in name. It's ridiculous in Russia. It's already, it's all predetermined. It's just pageantry. That said, it's also politically sensitive because, you know, people can't come out and protest and so forth. That said, Who's left to come out and protest? Who's going to lead mm -hmm. that? Navalny? No, he's dead. All the other oppositionists, serious ones, he is either taken off the chessboard by killing them or mm -hmm. just marginalized them and managed to penetrate their, their organizations so they can't be effective. So, again, I think he's feeling very, very good about that. And, again, he, he has no problem whatsoever sending hundreds of thousands of young Russian men to their death 
so that they can win Ukraine. And until Russian society says we're not going to put up with that, it's looking very good for Vladimir Putin personally, as well as how it's going in Ukraine. Mm. All right, Steve Hall, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much. Sure.